In this example, we're going to show you how to build the vectors to create the nameplate you can see on the screen. We're going to show you how to use the snapping tools to help create and align our vectors. And we will also look at accessing the font database to create the text, as well as the node editing tools to modify it before we think about machining. So let's start by creating a new file. So file, new, and I'm going to select a single sided job. In this case, the width is going to be 8.5. The height is going to be 2.5 and the thickness is going to be an eighth of an inch, 0.125. We're going to set the Z0 to be off the material surface and our XY datum position 00, 0 being the center of the workpiece. So now we have our rectangular workpiece and now we're going to begin by adding some vectors. So coming up to the create vectors section and selecting draw rectangle, I'm going to set my anchor point to be 0, 0, so it will be centered around the center of the part. My corner type, rather than being square, I actually want a radius in the corner. So I'll hit radius external and select a 0.1 inch radius. And my width is going to be 7.75 and my height is going to be 1.75. So with create, that now puts that onto the workpiece centered around the center of the job. Next, we're going to take a look at the four circles that will help fix the nameplate onto the wall. So I'm going to come up to my draw circle command and I've selected the diameter option but my diameter is incorrect at the moment I need this to be a sixteenth of an inch so I simply click into this area here and hit 1 divided by 16 equals and that converts the fraction into decimals I can now move my cursor into the right hand screen and just if you notice there it just snaps on to the corner of the um, rectangle on the radius of the uh, of the corner and I simply with my left mouse key click on there down into the bottom left top right and it's very easy to find those corner centers so we've easily created the four circles and I'm going to close that form down and think about creating the internal border so back up to the draw rectangle command and rather than putting in a size with a fixed X and Y I'm simply going to use my left mouse key and cover into the center of the top left hand circle hold the left mouse key down and just drag that now across and down to the right and just when I get to the center of the bottom right just let go and there we can see it's created a rectangle with an external radius but actually what I would like would be an internal radius so I select the radius internal and hit apply and you can see that we now have an even gap between the inner and outer vectors around the circle and I can close that down at this point now, I'm ready to go ahead and start thinking about adding some text. Okay, so let's move across now and create some text. So we're just going to open the text form. And in this case, I need to select what type of font that I want. So I can hit B on the keyboard, which will take me down to all the Bs. And I'm just going to scroll down and pick uh, brushed script MT. I'm not going to select bold or italic. I want it to be centered wherever I click. And I want the height to be one inch. So I'm just going to pick up now and put that in the center of the screen and just type in Vectophone, okay, and just close that down. So with that, I'm now going to select it again to put it into transform mode. And you can see it's got in the center um, a point that I can pick up and just with my left mouse key, if I hold that down, I can then start to drag this around the screen. So I'm just going to drag this now and just let go once that uh, mouse key is over the center of the screen and that's dropped it in the center. Now at this point there are still some issues that we need to address before we can think about machining it. Uh, one item is the fact that we have overlapping letters therefore we need to merge this all into one piece and also some of the gaps in between the letters are not correct and I need to address this. So let's deal with the gaps first so I'm going to come across now and select the edit text spacing and curve command some people call kerning and if, as I move my cursor across into the job, you can see the cursor's changed. And then if I move it in between the two letters, you can see on the screen, you've got two arrows pointing towards each other, which means that when I hit the left mouse key, that will bring the two letters together. If I hit, hold shift, you can see now that it's pointing outwards, thereby it would actually widen the gap between the two. So let's take a look at just making a few modifications. So I'm gonna uh, reduce the gap between the V and the E and maybe also the E and the C, and maybe on the H and the O there, and on the N and the E. Okay, so we started to make a little bit of a modification, and I can continue to do that until I was perfectly happy. At this point, I'm gonna come out of the command, 
and think about really bringing this together as to one individual piece because that will make it a lot easier for us to machine when we come to do the v-carping so with that whilst the vector is selected i'm going to come across to the under the edit objects menu the weld command i select weld and we now are going to replace the current vectors because it's going to merge them all into one piece. So I hit replace. Now that's done that job nicely. And if I actually go in and have a look, you can see there are some issues that we will need to address. You can see where the T and C meet here. You've also got where the O and the P. So there are a few little areas that we need to address before we think about machining that. So let's take a look now at this particular area and go into the node editing mode. Okay, this shows the individual points and the tangencies and the magnitudes that form these curves together. So with this, I now need to make some modifications here. So what would I like to do? Clearly this point seems to be okay, and this point seems to be okay, so maybe I need to delete this one here. So I can hover over that mouse, uh, over that node, and right mouse key hit delete point. Okay, and you can see also the tangency through here is not quite right, so I may think about smoothing that. If I hover over and hit S, you can see that smooth and I may just need to sort of adjust the tangency now so I can pick that up and just move that tangency until I'm a little bit happy with how that looks and we smooth through that and I'll do the same here delete the point first with hit D on the keyboard whilst being over the point and then I can look to maybe modify the tangency and I'm just going to move that up there and you can see that we've created a, a much smoother flow between those curves if I move across now we can see where the uh, o and the P match and we still got another issue here once again I'm going to remove this node so hovering over the top and hit D on the keyboard okay we can see there we've also got a sort of tangency issue that we've got there which we can address so I can just move that round and come across to this one here we can see we've got two points so delete the top point and once again we could just maybe look to address the tangency there okay so we've got now the name plaque almost ready for machining, but what I would like to do next is to enlarge the V, okay, to give it a bit more prominence. So that is a separate entity there, and I'm just gonna come out of the node editing mode and select that, and then go into the transform mode, and just enlarge that. So I'm gonna hover my left mouse key over that sort of top right-hand corner and just stretch that up. So I'm just stretching that up into the top left-hand corner. I'm just going to use the down arrow on my keyboard now. So I'm going to hit down on the keyboard and across to the left and just get that roughly spaced correct. Okay. And with that, I kind of I kind of like the idea. This V's got a nice um, emphasis over the rest of the text. So with that now, I want to actually stretch this out to make a bit more filling of the plaque. Okay. Currently, it's very much in the center. So I'm simply going to pick those items now. In fact, what I'll do is just stretch across. And as long as I touch the vectors, when moving from right to left, then it will be all included. So that picks that one. Actually, I need to collect the E as well. And now that whilst that's selected, I can come across and decide what size I want for that. So I'm going to use the set object, set selected object size command, which is in the transform objects. And I'm going to have link X, Y switched off, meaning that I'm going to scale it differently in X and Y. So the width I'm going to scale up to be seven. So quite a large extension in X and I'm actually going to reduce it in Y to 1.2. So with that, when I apply that, you'll see that stretched out, but you can see that the gap on the left hand edge is different to the right hand edge. So I need to center it on the workpiece. So with that, whilst it's selected, come across to the align selected objects and just hit the center and that will then put it into the correct location. So I'm gonna close out that form and now we're gonna move across and create the final nameplate tag that will go in the lower right hand corner. Okay, so let's move across to the text again and we'll select the form up and rather than the true type font, we're gonna select the single line font. So with that, I'm gonna hit the drop down now and we're gonna select the avant-garde. I want the text alignment to be center and I want the text height to be 0.125 and I'm just going to click roughly where I want it it won't be that accurate and I'm going to start texting which will be serial s-e-r-i-a-l space n-o dot space zero 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 one okay so with that now I've got the basis of the text so close out the form and we'll zoom in to take a look so I need to reposition it but before I do that I want to really get the spacing a bit better 
you can see that some of the letters are certainly in serial are a little close together. We have maybe got a larger gap between the O and the dot at the no, and maybe need to reduce the gap from the one to the O at the end. So let's go up to the edit text spacing and curve and come back down to the text. And you can see there that it's actually at the moment, and unless I use the shift key, it's actually gonna make it narrower. So I'm gonna hit shift on the keyboard and just click in between the letters and that will start to widen them up. Okay, so we're starting to get a better representation. I think we also need to do those two again. And I'm gonna let go now, and so it's actually gonna narrow this. I'm just gonna bring that dot closer together. And I'm gonna do the same with the O and the one at the end. Okay, or the zero and the one rather. So with that, I'm kind of happy that that is correct now. So I'm gonna come out of that and just pick this up now. So I'm gonna click and put it into transform mode. And we've got a number of dots dotted around the actual um, item there, but I'm actually gonna hover my mouse over the bottom right hand corner of the purple text and just pick that up. So once I've got that in, in line there, just hold the left mouse key down. And now I'm moving that around on that bottom right hand corner. And I'm simply gonna come up to the E select that and pick up this sort of snap line here and then come across to the top of the arc and take that snap line and where the two meet I'm going to release the left mouse key and there our serial number has now been added. So with that we've now finished the job and we can look to go and save it so I'm going to go up to file save as and we're going to save it as vector phone vector drawing CRV and save that and now we're in a position to go ahead and machine it. So for the machining, please refer to the related videos where you can see the machining video that follows on from this demonstration.